Last night was the coldest night of the year so far. It's not very warm now, although it's very bright outside, but um, very sharp frost this morning. It's um, certainly below zero. Anyway, haha, <laughs> yours truly, yesterday, decided to go fishing. Confirming to everyone who knows me that I'm raving bonkers. Anyway, I, I wasn't too worried. I I got down to the boat. I'd miscalculated the tide times. And I got down to the boat. The first job was light me little fire. So I got a nice fug going before anything else. Then I tackled up and the tide was coming in. I went to start the engine and uh, it was very sluggish turning over. I knew the batteries were fine. And it was going yung, yung. I thought you'll, you'll catch on in a minute. It's normally a good starter. And the next thing is smoke came out of the engine compartment. Ah, what happened? Well, I investigated and we had a piece of cable absolutely pack up. Um, this is not good quality copper. It's domestic cable, not marine grade. It's not tinned. And this little link goes went between the the solenoid and the starter motor. Well, it's a big, big starter motor on the Perkins, and that just couldn't ha ca carry it. Luckily, that was the only damaged, and I left it a few minutes, tried again. The engine started, so I was able to go fishing. Didn't do too well, as I say, got the tides wrong. And it was dark by the time I come in, so I was running on lights and torches and headlamps and so forth. And here this morning in the workshop, I'm charging up some, uh, is that on, it is on. I'm charging up some NICAD batteries. It's a simple little constant current charger I made up. It's just simply a car bulb in a box as a, as a load and a potential divider so I can control the current here. And this is a oven or microwave mechanical switch you might hear ticking you might do so that determines how long the batteries get a charge for so why am I doing that well it's for this torch which is a nice torch it's not a dear one but it's stainless which is good for the boat but it was designed to use these batteries U2 or whatever the equivalent is in the states but here they're, they're over a pound each and uh, well you know me by now i don't very reluctant to pay a pound each for something that you throw away afterwards where i get a lot of charges out of these these by the way are only c cells so the capacity is not as large as those but i can charge them up many times charge them up about 10 percent of their current output is uh, my, my practice and uh, they come out of uh, emergency light fittings and the like. And the length is exactly the length of all those together. So that works well. Anyway, I mentioned that. So I've made another one up this morning using braided. A bit more flexible. but um, And a spare. So that will get me out of that trouble. I'll fit that later on. Yesterday, looking at my comments... Donald Carbon said, what did I do with my sawdust? He'd obviously watched some video where I was cutting up something. And he said, do you chuck it away like the rest of us? Well, yeah, I suppose I do. I keep some for mopping up spills and this type of thing. But I've never found a, an efficient use for it. But I've been given this an awful lot of thought lately because there's absolutely masses of it. And I've been looking at YouTube and looking at various uh, videos on YouTube and the various ideas people come up with. But, uh, sorry guys, I, I don't rate uh, any of them much. Uh, it seems to me that, well, you can compost it, you can turn it into biomass, you can make it into pellets, you can put it in rocket stoves, you can do all these things. But if you look at all these videos, the amount of energy and resources that goes into processing it 
doesn't add up to what you get out of it in my book. Some of the videos, mainly from the US, sorry about this, but uh, oh, it's crackers. You have big diesel engines driving hydraulic rams and so forth and so on. Uh, it's, it's absolutely crackers. All you want to do is burn it, right? So there's got to be a simpler, easier means of doing this. There's one video I sort of quite liked, and that was Van Powell had a little video, and he, he'd he made a little rocket stove, um, and he'd put old oil or vegetable oil with his sawdust, and he didn't compact it, he just poured it in his stove. And, but I, I don't agree with putting a propellant with it, that defeats the object again, as I see it. But what I did like, he had a, like a gauze, circle but like the wick part where normally people just have a hole and he'd pack the sawdust around or push the sawdust around and put a lid on top a circle with a disc so that the top didn't burn now i like that idea but i thought perhaps this could be taken further but without the propellant without the machinery and all the rest of it that goes with it and perhaps a, a better or efficient type of burner must be out there, but I haven't seen one. But I did once, by accident, come very, very close, and I've mentioned this in one of my previous videos. So just a quick tale here. I'm not quite sure what, what was happening. Here's a glass jar. Just pretend, without me drawing it all out, just pretend that glass jar is a six-foot-high gas, empty gas cylinder, uh, an industrial-type nearly three foot in diameter and I cut the top off so it was a, a vessel and I drew holes all the way around the bottom about a foot 18 inches up and I used this as an incinerator to burn up rubbish when I was working on a boat back at the boat yard now we had to do this because lots of expensive boats there and wooden sheds no way could you light an open fire. You certainly couldn't leave it. So this was the safest way to get rid of rubbish. So I drilled these holes. They're about an inch in diameter. It was just to sort of to contain the fire. And it had a, a, a ring around the bottom and a dome bottom. And I drilled one small hole in the bottom because this was exposed to the weather and rain went in there so it wouldn't fill up. With... Anyway, as this built up with ash, eventually it was tipped out. And we use this for months and months and months. Only one day I had a damn good clean up in the boat and put loads of sawdust and shavings in here. There was already a fire in the bottom and it was smoking and smouldering away well or burning reasonably well. Anyway I knew it's quite safe so I went back into the boat which was 20-30 feet away working inside and I heard this enormous row, this noise well, it sounded like a big motorbike with his silencer gone. The sort of thing that stupid little kids do when they knock the baffles out of their bikes because they think they're going fast or something. Anyway, there's this awful noise and I stuck my head up to see what idiot was there and there was no one there. And it was this fire. And I looked across and the whole thing was bright, bright red. And flames were coming way out of the top a good 15, 20 feet, and the thing was roaring, and it was acting like a sort of a pulse jet. Well, it frightened me. It really, really frightened me. I didn't know what to do. I thought, if this, gets, if this starts going any further, and I, I didn't have any water or anything, and this thing was going, woof, 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 making a hell of a racket, and uh, sparks were going up into the sky. Hello, that switched off. But what... Um, what appears to be happening is that the, the level of sawdust seemed to have got level with roughly the holes. And the air coming in, being drawn in by the draft, disturbed a layer of the, the sawdust, which wasn't burnt, into the updraft. This had a, a good air to, to fill mixture, which went woof! And this shot up, and this, this sudden upward... Um, spurt of energy drew in draft in the bottom and it repeated and it sounded like a, a, a v1 or doodle bug as we used to call them it was and it went on for about 20 minutes and the entire cylinder was bright bright red 
as I say, it really frightened me. And it only happened that once, the conditions, the whatever. And I've, I've never quite uh, been able to achieve that again. But this was, this was acting something like, what do you call them? Something like a pulse jet. Some, as I say, something like the original V1 uh, flying bomb engines. So I think that ought to be the way that um, the rocket stoves ought to, ought to go. So just, I'm just thinking aloud. Well, no, I'm not thinking aloud. I'm telling you. The normal fill, it, fill up a cylinder with, with sawdust or the combustible material. The central chamber within the material for burning, your chimney if you like. And my initial thoughts is to have two. Two, two inlets, 180 degrees from one another, offset like so. And the idea, is, is the thought in my head, is to produce a vortex, which would increase the air to fill mix. Anyway, I think some experiments on those lines ought to be uh, pursued. Anyway, that's just a... A rambling waffle. Sorry about that, but um, my initial thoughts on this sawdust uh, problem. I'm certain that's where the goal lies. There we go. I believe the economics of charging up NICADs is well worth the trouble. I don't believe it's worthwhile messing around trying to charge those cells. There is a process known as dirty DC, but uh, I think it's quite pointless. I'll, I'll leave that to the Free Energy Brigade.